for YouTube, American RX at it again. Uh, um, I want to touch on, um, you know, you know, I think this is a, a Central America, so called. It's still a North America because there's really no Central America. There's really no North America. There's really no South America. It's just America, okay? As I showed you in previous videos, these are just demarcation lines. You divide up the territories of the indigenous people to have them um, work or labor for the benefit of colonize it, colonizers, okay? Now, um, I'm going to touch on British Honduras, okay? And the history of, uh, of what is now called Belize. It was once called British Honduras, okay? Um, I want to send some shout-outs to um, Big Up Yourself Dartmouth. Um, um, really appreciate the... Um, the, pro, the, 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 the promo, you know? Yeah, man, big up yourself. Um, enough respect and honor to Awa. Big up yourself, Awa. Big up yourself. Big up yourself. Big up yourself. Uh, big up the IACCC. You know what I mean? Family, you know? Yeah, so let's... Let's get with it. Okay, so... British Honduras. British Honduras was a British crown colony on the east coast of Central America, south of Mexico from 1862 to 1964, then a self-governing colony renamed Belize in June 1973 until September 1981, when it gained full independence as Belize. British Honduras was the last continental position of the United Kingdom in the Americas. Now, this was a stronghold for the Mayans, all right? All right? That's why they said it's the, the, the last possession, okay? The colony grew out of the Treaty of Versailles, all right? So, these are treaties you got to um, look into, all right? This, this was between Great Britain and... Um, front uh, the French all right I think this is what they say in the end of the America uh, the American Revolution of War Revolutionary War so but they were just fighting for to divide up the land that's all they was doing right possession between Britain and Spain which gave um, it was Britain and Spain Treaty of Paris. That was between Britain and Spain, they say. Okay, cool, cool. All right. I think I think France have a part to play in that one too. But anyways, between Britain and Spain, which gave the British rights to cut log, logwood between Hondo and Belize rivers. The Convention of London expanding its concession to include air between the Belize and Sibun rivers. In 1862, the settlement of Belize in the Bay of Honduras was declared British a British colony called British Honduras and the Crown representative was elevated to Lieutenant Governor subordinate to the Governor of Jamaica. So Governor of Jamaica had a big role to play also in a lot of these colonies, alright? <laughs> Pay attention. <laughs> alright. As the British consolidated their settlement and pushed deeper into the interior in search of mahogany, in the late 18th century, they encountered resistance from the Maya. All right? Now, these people are not Mayas. Okay? I don't know what these people are. They, I could tell you that they're Chinos. These, not, these are not no Mayas. Okay? The people in Belize. I'm going to show you who, what the Mayas look like.
These are the people in Belize, all right? See what they look like? Hmm? See the Garifuna people of Belize? Hmm? You see what they look like? You see any chinos here? You see any chinos here? Hmm? You see any chinos here? Maybe one and two. This is what they're trying to. This is what they're trying to say that they are as Mayans. These ain't no Mayans, man. These are chinos. No, this is what the people of Belize look like. All right. See that? See that? Hmm. This is what the people of Belize look like. These are the Mayans. All right. These are what you see on the walls. Okay. This is what the face of Belize looks like. All right. Not no um, chinos, okay? And I'm going to further solidify that. Look on the coat of arms. Do they look like chinos to you? Hmm? Do these people look like chinos? Anyways, let's get to it. I'm going to show you something too. Check this out. This is what they always do. They change the complexion of the people on the coat of arms. Okay? Check this out. Now look at it now. Look at the new, look at the new coat of arms. Anyways, I'm trying to open up this. You could see it. All right, I'll try. I try to open it up so you could see what I'm what I'm talking about. Okay, look at this. You see how they're lighting up this dude over here? That's what they do. Okay, this is the new coat of arms that they designed. See, current October 2013, right? This is recent. They're lighting it up, all right? And they will show you that the original was looking like this one. Check it out. See? Earlier versions. See? You see any chinos here? All right, stop playing with me, man. I told you, man, I'm coming for your for 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 your soul. I'm gonna snatch souls, man. Okay, let's get it. Let's get to it. One moment. Let me see. See if this thing is recording or not. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah. Um uh, got some issues with my, my screen recorder, but let's get to it. Um so where was I? I was at down here. Okay, let's get to it. As the British consulate is set down, okay, I was here. Re Encounter resistance from the Maya. In the second half of the 19th century, however, a combination of events outside and inside the colony redefined the position of the Maya. During the caste war in Yucatan, a devastating struggle that halved the population of the area between 1847 and 1855, after refugees fled to British settlements, settlement, the Legislative Assembly had Given large landowners in the colony firm titles to their vast estate estates in 1855, but did not allow Maya to own land. You hear that? The Maya could only rent land or live on reservations. Nevertheless, most of the refugees were small farmers who, by 1857, were growing considerable quantities of sugar, rice, corn, and vegetables in the northern district, now Corozal. An Orange Walk district. In 1857, 
the town of Carazal, then six years old, had 4,500 inhabit uh, inhabitants. Second in population, only to Belize town, which had 7,000 inhabitants. Some Maya who had fled the strife in North but had no wish to, to become British subjects settled in the remote Harbach Hills, just beyond the woodcut frontier of the Northwest. By 1862, in about 1,000 Maya established themselves in 10 villages in this area. The center of San Pedro. One group of Maya led by Marcos Cano attacked by a mahogany camp on the Bravo River in 1866 demanded ransom for their prisoners and rent for their land. A detachment of British troops sent, a San, sent to San Pedro was defeated by a Maya later that year. Early in 1867, more than 300 British troops marched to the Yalabak Hills and destroyed the Mayan village, villages. Provisions, provision stores, and granaries in, a, in an attempt to drive them out of the district. The Maya returned, however, and in 1870, Kanon and his men marched into Carazal and occupied the town. Two years later, Kanon and 150 men attacked barracks at Orange Walk. After several hours of fighting, Kanon's group retired. Kanon mortally wounded. Colonel Martel Wounded died on September 1, in 1872. That battle was the last serious attack on the colony. In the 1880s and 1890s, Mopan and Ketchumaya fled from forced labor in Guatemala and come to British Honduras. They settled in several villages in southern British Honduras, mainly around San Antonio and in Toledo district. The Maya could use crown lands yeah, I'm telling you, man, these people are fucking criminals, man. They take the people, they take our land until we gotta, we gotta, uh, rent the land from them. How bold are are you, man? This is why I can't have no form of like respect for this whole th system, man. It's 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 a lie, man. It's 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 built on it's built on lies. I can't honor that. No, my spirit does does just doesn't. Mesh with it, man. The Maya could use crown lands, right? Aside as reservations, but these people lack communal rights under a policy of indirect rule, a system of elect accolades, accolades, mayors, adopted Spanish local government, link these Maya to colonial administration. However, the remoteness, remoteness of the area of British Honduras in which they settled combined with their largest subsistence way of life resulted in the Mopan and Ketchumaya maintaining more are, are their traditional way of life and becoming less assimilated into the colony than the Maya of the North. The Mopan and Ketchumaya maintain their languages and a strong sense of identity, but in the North, the distinction between Maya and Spanish was increasingly, increasingly blurred and a mestizo culture <laughs> emerge. You hear that, people? A mestizo. Check this out. Okay? So if those Chinos are Mayans, who's this lady right here? Mestizo is a term historically used in Spain and Hispanic America. Originally referred to a person combined of European and indigenous descent, regardless of where the person was born. The term was used to ethnic, as an ethnic racial category for a mixed race casters that evolved during this so look at this lady right here does she look like a chino to you all right culture emerged in different ways and to different degrees then the maya who returned to british Honduras in 19th century became incorporated into the colony as poor and dispossessed ethnic minorities you see that people you see that ethnic, the ethnic cleansing over here by the end of 19th century, the ethnic pattern that remained largely intact throughout the 20th century was in place. Protestants, largely of African descent, who spoke either English or Creole, lived in, in Belize. The Roman Catholic Maya and Mestizo spoke Spanish. You see that now? 